The Russian invasion of Ukraine marked another bloody phase in the conflict that had been raging since 2014. Since then, millions of Ukrainians have been displaced, and the ones that remain face a fight for their very existence. This experience has also been shared by the ethnic minorities of Ukraine, of which there are many, such as Jews, Romanians, Poles, Greeks, and of course the Crimean Tatars. In this video, we'll be exploring the origin and history of the Crimean Tatars, as I thought it would be interesting to shed light on this pretty fascinating group of people, especially given the relevance of current events. If you're interested to know more about Ukraine's history or the war itself, there are some other videos I made in the top right and another in the description. As ever, this took a while to make, so I'd greatly appreciate if you dropped a like, left a comment, subscribed. I am curious to hear your thoughts about this style of video, and of course it does help a ton, algorithmically speaking. Now without further ado, let's get right in. The Crimean Tatars are the native inhabitants of, you guessed it, the Crimean Peninsula, but there isn't really a specific date as to when they first appeared. Modern Crimean Tatars are descended from a variety of people, including Germanic Goths, Greek settlers, Italians, and other Turkic and nomadic peoples that settled in the area over time. The name Tartar itself is kind of a loose term that was simply given to people from Central Asia and around Mongolia, in an area that was referred to as Tartaria. The first well-documented people that the Crimean Tartars are descended from were known as Khazars, a Turkic nomadic group that settled there when it was part of the Empire of Khazaria. Khazaria later collapsed in the late 10th century and was replaced by the Deshdai Kipchak. Deshdi Kipchak? Oh, I probably butchered that. I'm sorry to anyone that speaks any Turkic languages. The Deshdi Kipchak was a confederation of Cumans and Kipchaks, both of which are also Turkic people. When the Mongols appeared in the early 13th century, they conquered the confederation and incorporated all of its territory, including Crimea, into the new Mongol Empire. After the Mongol Empire splintered into various successor states, the inhabitants of Crimea adopted Islam and eventually assimilated the local Mongol population. By this time, the Crimean Tatars already spoke a nascent form of their modern language and had formed a unique identity distinct from their neighbours. They eventually became a part of the Crimean Khanate, another Turkic state which would become a vassal to the Ottoman Empire in the 16th century that by now was developing an interest in the region. Under the Ottoman Empire, the Crimean Tatars took part in slave raids in neighbouring lands, venturing as far as Poland and Ruthenia which today comprises modern Belarus and parts of Ukraine. The Khanate was an important regional power, and occasionally allied with and against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and the Tsardom of Muscovy. Perhaps the most notable alliance was in 1648, with Bodan Kimonetsky and the Cossack uprising against Poland. The Crimean Khanate was invaded twice by Russia in 1736 and 1737, resulting in the destruction of nearly every major settlement and the deaths of tens of thousands of civilians. Guess some things really don't change, do they? Even with Ottoman assistance, the Khanate was never able to recover. The last Khan, Sahin Gure, was forced to accept the peace treaty of Kushuk Kainaja in 1774. Russia later broke the treaty in 1783 and annexed the entire Khanate. Now under Russian control, the peninsula was subject to detartarization, as the Russian government imposed heavy taxes over the local populace. Thousands of Crimean Tatars fled for the Ottoman Empire, and their property was seized and given to ethnic Russians and Ukrainians. This process continued until 1853, when the Crimean War happened in earnest between Russia and the Ottoman Empire, later forcing the British and French to intervene on behalf of the Ottomans. This led to yet another mass exodus of Crimean Tatars to Anatolia and other parts of the empire. During the period leading up to the First World War, the national identity of the Crimean Tatars began to reassert itself, despite efforts of the Russian government to stamp it out. Led by Ismail Gasparali, an intellectual that set up newspapers and disseminated ideas of a unique identity, the Crimean Tatars opted for independence during the chaos of the Russian Revolution and created the Crimean People's Republic. This was later crushed by the Bolsheviks in 1918, and the peninsula was subsequently absorbed into the USSR. Under Soviet control, the Crimean Tatars were faced with widespread famine in 1921, causing the deaths of over 100,000 people. This was just the beginning, though, of efforts by the Soviet authorities to commit genocide on a national scale. As part of the Ukrainian terror famine, or Holodomor, of the early 1930s, the Crimean Tatars were also targeted, and surviving intellectuals were executed during the Great Purge of the later 1930s. 
most infamous attempt to wipe out the Crimean Tatars were the forced deportations in 1944, as Stalin believed that they had collaborated with the Nazis. Whilst this was true to some degree, the same justification was used to eliminate other ethnic minorities such as the Chechens in the Caucasus around the same time. In the end, between 20 to 40% of the entire population of the Crimean Tatars were murdered, either through starvation, forced marches or sickness, as they were sent to Central Asia, mostly to Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. By the late 1940s, Russians and Ukrainians made up the bulk of the population in Crimea, whilst the Crimean Tatars were relegated to being an unrecognised ethnic minority. In Central Asia, the surviving populace faced discrimination and poor conditions, and many would never see their home again. Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev reversed many of these policies and gradually the Crimean Tatars were allowed to return home, but the state gave minimal support. Any real efforts to repatriate the Crimean Tatars were undertaken once the USSR had collapsed and Crimea became a part of Ukraine. This process wasn't officially sanctioned, but up until 2014, tens of thousands had managed to return to their ancestral homeland. What they returned to, however, was completely different to what they had expected. Homes were not given, and in many cases homelessness was the only option. Once Russia annexed Crimea in 2014, persecution restarted as many Tatars had supported Ukraine, especially after the representative body known as the Majorless was banned for allegedly being a terrorist group. Many would then volunteer in the Ukrainian army following the invasion, but since Putin's partial mobilisation, up to 90% of the remaining Crimean Tatars have been called up for conscription. This has been accused by the international community as yet another attempt at genocide. But now the Crimean Tatars face yet another existential threat, but like always, they will continue to fight for their homeland. I am confident that everyone from us will win. Ukraine! If you enjoyed this video, drop a like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'm very happy that my last video seems to have done quite well and a lot of you seem to enjoy it. Anyway, I'm Irovic and I hope to see you in the next one.